Um, I want to talk a bit about peace of mind and sacrifices. And the reason I'm bringing this up is it's more to do with, well, even here in Spain, it's because we've started to get the residency stuff sorted now, it's all starting to fall into place. Um, it's like having a huge weight lifted. Um, we've got some documents being processed at the embassy in Manila at the minute. Um, we'll soon have them here, and then we'll be on to the next stage. Um, the work I do, I think I'll be okay for the next 15 years. Although it's um, like now, I'm talking to different companies about different work, because one of the things I'd like to do is stay in Spain. Um, there's a lot of jobs there. If I wanted to hop over and stay in the UK, I could get a job today. Um, but it was like it was a job I'm looking at at the moment in Canary Wharf in London. Um, it's mainly based on documentation processing. Um, so I said to him, well, why do you need me in Canary Wharf a couple of times a week? Um, if you need me in once a month or for me, a special meeting, that's fine. But uh, it's an expensive run even if I'm in Worcester because the train can cost up to £140 a day. Uh, it's actually cheaper for me to fly from Spain into London. So that's, that's one thing on negotiation. Um, there's a few surveys that are about to kick off in play and discussing rates and things. And I'm seriously contemplating getting a new vehicle um, for either Spain or the UK. Ideally, I want it in Spain. And, you know, I don't mind driving over to the UK and using it over there and then bringing it back. Because now I'm a resident of Spain, I can actually drive on Spanish plates as well. Uh, which makes life easier, but also means I can travel backwards and forwards. Um, but I don't really want to pay for two cars in two countries, so I'm thinking about that at the moment because work wise, I need to be traveling around in the UK. Um, we'll wait and see, let's just wait and see. Um, but this gets on to what I was talking about peace of mind. When we were coming out of the Philippines, because um, obviously the call center was very busy. And then we, we were hit with the earthquake, we were hit with Typhoon Haiyan. The regulations changed relating to solar. So overnight, over say two months, not literally overnight, things changed completely. Um, but you also start to think, well, these risks are real risks and they're potentially life changing. Um, the financial one's not an issue when I'm there, but what if I was hit by the bus tomorrow? I've got my wife and kids in the Philippines, and the life would change instantly. Um, now, I already have that nest egg that we're building with the property there, and uh, somebody brought it up tonight. I'll go and have a look for your name, uh, Tino Tino, uh, relating to life being better in Spain for the family, and I agree. Um, but at the same time, I like having our foothold in the Philippines as well. I like being in the Philippines, but I would say that moving to Spain is sort of secure the family long term. It's having not only a base here, but when April and the kids have got their uh, Spanish passports, <clears throat> or I may even apply for the kids to have their British passports. Um, we'll see how that goes once the Spanish stuff's done. Um, but the point being is they've got their European foothold. If they decide they want to go back to the Philippines when they're older, that's fine. The land's already there, the property's already there. <coughs> There's no downside for that. But I want to make sure the kids have got the best education I can give them, access to the a cleaner environment um we don't really have the road dust issues we don't have pollution here in the same way and the facility generally is much much better um an example of that tonight the reason i'm up i mean it's early for me now half past 11 but i went to bed an hour ago is the street uh, guys have been out doing all the drains along the street um they do all this work in the middle of the night. It's like the bins are emptied often late at night. 
Um, the beaches get fixed late at night. It's when everybody's not there. Everybody, you, you wake up in the morning, things have changed. Um, but the, they're very, very proactive in keeping the infrastructure flowing. So that's something that I like about Spain. I've, I've discussed stuff like this in the Philippines before, and sometimes it's not on deaf ears. It's sort of like, you don't like it here, you can go home. It's like, but this is basics. That's not um, a response. That's, that's an excuse. You know, the problem is open sewers in the Philippines. The problem is when they need a build a new subdivision, they move a pipe one or two sizes up when they should actually go 10 sizes up and build on the population growth. Those things are the things that are the problems. It's, those things need to change. The penny pinching at the same time, the corruption, you know, like, well, just get half of the materials and we'll pocket the cash. Um, add extra sand, don't get as much cement, all this sort of stuff goes on and on and on. And the other people that lose out are the people in that country. Now, Spain is not perfect, it has major corruption issues as well, but at the same time, the infrastructure and stuff functions. <coughs> yes, there's big problems, but at the same time, not in the same way. Um, but that's where the peace of mind comes from. I know my family will be fine here. I know Zoe's getting good education here, because obviously um, she she has vocal issues with her autism. And here she has a lot of good teachers. She's got people that are very hands-on, got people that actually like doing what they do. Um, it's not following a gravy train. It's not just for cash. They love what they do. Heavily, heavily involved, and at the same time, always the same. The teachers update us like at least three times a week online on what they're doing. They have little books that, um, little journals they bring home every day that says, you know, this is ongoing, this is this. They, you know, just basic information, and those things make a difference. I'll be honest, they do make a difference because you know your kids are developing, but also the teachers want to teach. Um, I'm not saying that's different in the Philippines so much, but I'm just saying they're very into it and they want you involved. We're part of the uh, Parent Teacher Association here. Um, and I'm currently looking at joining up with the Red Cross here as well to get more involved with the stuff they get up to as well. Um, because it's a good sense of community. They, everything sort of pulls together. Um, now I know in the Philippines you get that, you get your town or your neighborhood, but often it's clusters because you may find that this cluster functions, you know, but this bit of the town doesn't like that bit of the town, it doesn't like this bit of the town. Um, I've seen it before where people go, oh, it's dangerous up there, or it's this and this, and you're just like, don't. It's just parts of the town. You know, I know you get, like, in your own neighborhood, wherever you are, you know, doesn't matter what country you're in, there's bits of areas which are, you go, well, I don't recommend going down there. But when you start doing it just because that's a different town or whatever, it doesn't pull things together. It, it doesn't gel, you know. Uh, it's not proactive in the same way. You know, there was a conversation earlier that came up about, um, expats, you know, in the Philippines, they get their old beer belly, which is very, very easy to do in the Philippines, <coughs> because a lot of people don't have a lot of things to do. One of the things I found with some of the groups I was talking with, and whatever, they're a bit, uh, because you're a foreigner, you know, the photography groups, they're, they, they feel a bit strange when you're joining their group, but at the same time, the expats don't seem to form the same sort of groups and have some Filipinos join it to sort of break some of those barriers. Um, so it does become a little bit difficult to get that across sometimes. Um, but here in Spain, not an issue. I mean, half the population in this area are tourists, expats, retirees. Um, quite simply, there is a lot of activities here. You just got to find them. There is a photography club. There is 
walking clubs, cycling clubs, and it's for all age groups as well. So it's very proactive because it's got a very proactive expat community here, as well as a proactive local community. The sports facilities are phenomenal here. Uh, there's a lot on the doorstep, a lot. Um, and this is what I'm saying, all this gives me peace of mind because even going to the UK, um, Worcester, which is where I probably base myself, being in West Midlands, central to the UK, travel around, it's also where my parents are based, also where my daughter's based, it has declined drastically over the last 20 years. It's become a grim town. I was going to use the phrase Grimsby. Uh, <coughs> I don't think it's there yet in the, the way that it's declined, but its drug issues have increased a lot and there's a lack of media pressure on that to say we want this sorted out. They don't cover it. There's not enough done saying this is a major problem. They, this is, needs to be sorted out. In the same way, um, it's become a university town. So you've got the university and all the houses being bought up for student houses and it's just deteriorated a lot of this stuff. The, the uh, community units have sort of broken down because, quite simply, there is no community unless it's um, tied in with the university and um, student union, that sort of stuff. There isn't really the same sort of community it used to have. Um, it's been destroyed. Um, it's sad, really. Now, I do know there's other parts of the city which are a bit more functional these days, but where we, my parents now live is up in um, St. John's. Um, it's not as nice as it used to be. Uh, it's as simple as that. So, I do think that Spain offers a lot more as a family because you have the good weather, you have the opportunities here of being slightly um, away from a major city, so you have the um, the countryside, you've got the beaches, you've got a nice environment to live in, and when the kids get older I'm sure they'll probably move on to Madrid or Barcelona for work or whatever, but while they're kids, I want my kids to enjoy being kids, uh, and that, that's an important thing for me. Um, and I do think this is where some expats can sometimes not relate to why I do some of the stuff I do. Um, because what I do is not based on finances in the sense of make as much money as possible, wouldn't you like to be rich? I couldn't care less. Um, it's about sustainability, it's about family life, it's about quality of life. Um, it's not difficult for me to go full throttle into my career. It is not difficult at all. Those companies would love me to do that. Um, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I know I'll be away from home most of the time. I know the guys even in the UK are working alongside. They're away from home just as much. When I was working for Acrylion, I was actually in Premier Inn in one year for nine months. Nine, that's a hotel chain. Nine months. I, I was in... Um, Portsmouth, Edinburgh, Glasgow, um, where else? there's a few locations I went to, oh, let me just close this phone down a minute, that's Jay calling me, <laughs> um, so I was in these different locations and you start thinking, I'm in a purple room, <laughs> you know, because obviously it's their, their hotel colours, but the, the point being is that becomes that life and I want to move away from it. Um, also, people die quite young or they they get finished by the time they hit 55 or whatever because ill health, heart attacks, early retirement. Um, they, I mean, the funny thing is they, they keep making people redundant and hire them back because they realize they don't have the skills within the business. So they go, oh, well, we don't need you. Then two months later, they're going, can you come back? Because we suddenly realize what you do here. Um, so work-wise, I just want family life. I'd rather be part-time here in Spain, um, keeping on with what I do, and then developing the English stuff, and then developing other little things here in Spain. Like even I don't even mind doing airport pickups, because quite simply, 
I just want to be home at five o'clock. I want to be home with the kids. I want to just relax. I've put enough hours in over the years. I want a more relaxed lifestyle. Um, but I do think expats do make sacrifices as well, which are often aren't even thought about. When you think of a lot of guys going out to the Philippines with the mindset of, I'm just going to go here. I'm not going to settle down. So I'll get a girlfriend. But I don't want any kids. I don't want this. And then over time, that suddenly all changes. You know, oh, she, the girlfriend's now wanting to move in, then marriage, then kids, then a lot of decisions get made on, okay, is it right to stay here or should we move home? And I know there's a lot of guys still in the Philippines, but the number of people that I've known since 2008 to now that are still in the Philippines, it, it, it's dwindled significantly. Um, they've gone abroad because of their families, simple as that. And that's why I think, you know, the, the risks and changes that go on in relationships um, is something that doesn't get factored in at day one when you're just thinking, this is all new, this is all shiny, I, I like it here. I'm just going to live on my small pension or I've got, I'm making a thousand dollars a month or whatever. I'm going to be fine here or going offshore, coming back. I'm just going to keep it simple. But as time goes on, you start getting used to your creature comforts. You start to want different things. You start to realize that, yeah, I don't, I don't need aircon, but I like aircon. <laughs> <coughs> And you, you get into your comfort zone where, where you want things to be. And I know my cost of living is a lot more than a lot of other people in the Philippines. I don't dispute that. Um, but the point is, that's the quality of life I want. That's it. I don't grumble about it. I make the money when I'm there. I make the money when I'm here. Whatever. Um, at the end of the day, my quality of life's improved over the time period I've been in the Philippines. Because you get more and more creature comforts. It's a good life. Um, but at the same time, here in Spain, it's very hard to co compete. <laughs> it really is. What we have in Spain, I could not compare. Um, healthcare, non issue in Spain. In the sense that even if you have no medical cover, they will uh, treat you. Philippines, hit and miss. <coughs> Spain, no problems with the facilities, no problems with um, equipment, you know, electronics and stuff. I can get them all. I can get them from the whole of Europe. Most of my electronics do not come from Spain itself. Um, the only thing I did was my Apple Mac, I think. Everything else I got on eBay, I've got from Germany, I've got from the UK. Get, even car parts I get from the UK because they're way cheaper. But the difference is there's no tax duty until Brexit. Um, but we'll wait and see on the Brexit thing as well. I think that's still early doors as well. Um, and this is why I'm sort of looking forward to having everything processed, completed, wrapped with a little bow, um, frankly, the kids, because once they're Spanish, I couldn't care less what happens with the Brexit. Um, I know it sounds quite negative from my neck with that, but in all honesty, I have no control over it. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. The only thing I care about is my family, and even if the UK did some damage to its own economy, it would recover in time. But the work I do because of the age group, um, there's not enough people with the same skill sets. And that's not me boasting, it's reality. They haven't invested in what I do for generations. And even as a carpenter um, years ago, I was the leading hand at 35, where when I joined, they were like 45, 50. So the skill gap's gone. That, that was already 20 years. I, I was 20 years ahead of getting into that position back then, because quite simply, they didn't have enough people with the right amount of skills. And if you're smart enough and could manage people, you can move up quite quickly. But in all honesty, over the years, I've just seen the UK go multimedia training because it gets government subsidies and all this sort of stuff. And at the same time, you look at joiners, you look at electricians and all the other bits, they don't get the same investment. 
they're not pushing for these gaps to be filled. Um, and as such, I'll, I'll have work till I retire if I want it. Um, but I also think though, I want to be finishing and wrapping up my day-to-day -day work of chasing work in the next eight to ten years. Not because I'm lazy and going to sit at home doing nothing, but more a case of I want to go and explore with the wife and do some stuff before I get too old to do it. I like riding motorbikes, for example. Um, so it's okay when you're the, my age at the moment. It doesn't affect me too much. But um, like my friend Ollie that went right across Europe into Asia and everything else on motorbike, um, doing that as I get older, you start to feel it. You know, if you're getting into um, Eastern Europe during the winter time or something, you can feel the cold in your bones and stuff. I want to try and avoid that. <laughs> so, yeah, enjoy life where you can. But I do think that some people concentrate too much on the money and not enough on it, relaxing and just enjoying life. Right now, I've got good peace of mind, good quality of life, re relatively good income. And what can I complain about? Nothing. Thanks for watching.